Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's your brother, Son in Esperance, back again with another episode of the I Thrive Podcast. I know y'all miss me. It's been a while, but you know, I have some life stuff going on that's still going on, but we back right now. And yes, I, I wanted to come back with something. Hey, everybody's special now. Everybody's special. But you know, I wanted to get something for you. You know, someone wondered, wait, I think I've seen this one before. Hold on a second. Is that who I think it is? It is. It is her. It is she. We have Sister Sierra Jennings in the Zoom platform today who's going to give us her testimony on growing up in the sway of holiness. Sister Sierra, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's a lovely, it's a lovely Saturday. Wonderful. I can tell. It looks like the sun is bright and shining over there. It is, it it's is. good vibey. That's 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 wonderful. You know, we got to take it in before the cold winters are coming in. But, um, you know, thank you very much for taking the time to come on and, you know, sharing your testimony. I know a lot, you know, are going to be thankful for it, including myself, to really get the experience of what it was like, of course, growing up in this way of holiness. And here your dad is, is an apostle, you know, so. Um, but thank you so much. Before we get into it, those of you watching, as you know, this podcast affiliates itself with one church and one church only. That is First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, where the leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. If you're looking for a church to attend a first church location, you can go on the truthofgod.com, click locations, and see what location is closest to you. If you're looking to be baptized right in the name of Jesus Christ, same thing, truthofgod.com, click locations, uh, contact the local secretary or uh, uh, local minister there so you can set that baptism up. Let's not forget to keep the apostle and his family in prayer as well as the faithful ministering brethren and their families as well. And let's not forget to keep one another in prayer too, brothers and sisters. We all have our battles and struggles that we go through. So let's always continue to keep one another in prayer thank you for all your prayers and well wishes once again brothers and sisters it's been you know some rough rough roads and so forth but we're here we're back i'm gonna do the best i can to squeeze as much in there's just a lot you know going on but i haven't forgotten y'all i haven't ran away or nothing like that i'm still here and uh gonna be ready to get rolling uh consistently again very soon uh with that being said that's enough for me it's time to hear from our dear sister so sister sierra Tell us, uh, how did God, you know, I would say, you know, bring you out the world, but how was it like growing up, you know, in this way of holiness as your father, you know, being an apostle? Um, I will say like when you're a kid, you, you obviously don't really realize everything that's going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like we grew up, um, I truly feel like we grew up really normal, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had, I had a really great childhood, honestly, like, you know, uh, despite like my dad traveling a lot and stuff like that, you know, he very much was still around playing with, I mean, he's told so many stories of the pulpit, like yeah. playing with us when we were kids, like outside parents attending like school events and stuff. Um, it, and even as I got older and, you know, I had like friends who, realize who my dad was since you know he was on tv obviously and stuff it just it's still it didn't not that it didn't feel normal it just I don't know I it was it was interesting I think because I was so young I was still like in this bubble of like not being out in the real world in a sense so like yeah. I, being in school and stuff like that um grew like I grew up with the same people since I've known since I was a kid so it wasn't a surprise to them they always knew like it wasn't really, um, yeah, I, I guess it wasn't, it just, it was normal. Mm -hmm. That's the best way, I, like for <laughs> me, it just felt normal. I think as I got older and, you know, um, the broadcast became like a lot more popular, that's when it was, and like social media mm -hmm. was like, this became like a bigger thing. That's when I was like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> like, you know, okay, this is like, you know, this is, this is all right. This mm -hmm. is, this is what's happening. Um, and I think also just with social media, people's opinions became like, it wasn't just like people writing random letters or like saying random things, like people's opinions were like more in your face, mm -hmm. um, about what they thought felt about him or what they thought about us. And, um, I feel like around that time, I don't really remember when, but I just remember around that time, that's when, things really kind of were like, okay, all right, this is, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
yeah yeah i don't know okay no so in in that spectrum you know speaking about it because of course a lot of times people wonder man is is he like this at home like is he so uh, at home and stuff like that and you know i guess you know people get shocked when they hear no yeah. we had a normal childhood he's fun yeah. he knows how to have a balance you yeah. know I, 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 y'all know him as pastor you know jennings we know him yeah. as dad you know so yeah. it's 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 alarming to a lot of folks and so forth but you know as you yeah. say you know when it started to begin popular you know mm-hmm. it started to really like expand and now you were able to see okay wow this is serious because some people are threatening you know my dad some like yeah. how 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 was that you know growing up i i mean honestly i remember i remember him talking about getting threats since threats since i was a kid like that wasn't new mm-hmm. like I remember like as a kid on Frankfurt Ave, just like sitting up there and like uh, he would play, people would, he would play like the voicemails he would get um, like over, um, like during like convention stuff like that. Or I don't know if it was just conventions or regular Sundays, but I remember he would like play, you know, voice messages that people left threatening his life. So like mm-hmm. that wasn't, that wasn't not normal. Like I, I always knew that was a thing. Mm-hmm. It just, um, and I also thought it was like, seriously? Like, I just thought it was the weirdest thing. Like, why yeah. are you threatening? <laughs> why are you threatening this man's life? Like, yes, yes. you can turn the channel. <laughs> like, it, just, <laughs> it, it never, it didn't make, I mean, it's still, I, it just still doesn't make sense. I'm like, mm-hmm. you can choose to listen or not. Like, why are you doing that? But yeah, um, yeah that part was like, that part was always there. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember that at a very young age. Oh. And um, yeah, I, I remember that, but I think the, it, again, it became more in your face when things got bigger. And like I said, social media and like all of that stuff, um, you know, when we were, when, you know, the church started like really consistently po- like posting on YouTube and doing lives mm-hmm. like that, like all of that, like, and you know, I had to stop reading comments after a while. I'm like, okay, I can't do this anymore. But, um, but yeah, yeah, I will say, yeah. Wow. And was it you that I think because um there was I don't know if it was a woman that tried to attack your mom? Was it you she was holding? No, so no. it was my baby sister. It was okay. my it was my baby sister Persia. Um I remember that day though. I remember that day vividly. Um I remember my mom was holding my sister and I remember she, uh, the sister who attacked her, she was being very disruptive. I remember that whole scene. She was in mm-hmm. the front being very disruptive. Um, I remember my dad like had stopped and like addressed her the first time. And then when she escorted out, I saw her walking up. I remember seeing her walking up and I saw her like cock her fist back and I uh, ducked. I remember yeah. ducking. Yeah. And then um, I don't really remember. I. I remember picking up my sister, but then I remember I was talking about this with my cousin like a while ago and my cousin was like, no, like I picked her up. And then like, I just like just a whirlwind of like, we got like, you know, taken out. And um, I remember sitting in the financial office. I, mean, I think that was my dad's office at the time before I turned to financial office in Frankfurt Avenue. But anyway, we were in that back room with the police and I just, I remember all of that. And um, yeah, that I, that whole situation like I think I don't even know for how long after that like I would cry before going to church I was I was like I was I was scared Mm -hmm. um and whenever like he would have like debates or like bigger events like the bigger the crowd like the more anxious I would get and Mm -hmm. so like I would just have such a hard time and I remember my aunt Brina um sister Sabrina Hunter who plays keys um she I remember she would always like take take me downstairs like take me and my younger siblings just kind of downstairs just to like chill out Mm -hmm. but I had a I had a really hard time as a kid after that just kind of get going going back into church and feeling safe Mm -hmm. essentially um yeah I don't know how I forget how old I was I had to been I had been under under eight because I remember where we were living at the time Mm -hmm. maybe seven or eight definitely under eight years old but yeah I had a I had a hard time Mm -hmm. after that no, I mean, I could imagine because, uh, I mean, I understand why some would give those threats to your dad and, you know, all this, but then just to surprisingly have someone come and attack your mom while she has a, you know, I mean, I, I would understand if your mom was by herself, in a sense, you still don't do it. But the fact that yeah. even if she has a baby in her arms, 
like it, yeah. it just goes to show that I, I don't care you know like well, wow so now you know from you know that point on and of course as you said it affected you growing up now you know as a daughter of course when did you realize okay i'm not just you know a preacher's kid like this is this is serious this because you know you have the typical you know preacher's kids they grow up and abc like your dad like he's an actual apostle here like when did it click that no this is you know he's traveling and while he's traveling like did you have those concerns is he gonna come back is someone gonna try to you know take his life there or whatever the case is how was it like growing up and when did you realize my dad is a, like this he's an apostle I, I don't I don't think I had like a like a moment that that it was like oh wow like it clicked it's like I I knew like I knew mm -hmm. I always knew I just I can't like I didn't I don't remember having like an aha moment mm -hmm. um it's just something I always knew and I mean obviously like I you know as a kid you you, you only understand like to a certain extent but mm -hmm. I just, I remember just always knowing mm -hmm. because he would talk about, he would talk about his work all the time. I remember when I was a kid, he would talk about, um, you know, the, uh, you know, building the church from the ground in the shape of a pyramid. Like he talked about that since I was a young child. Like I remember all, I remember these conversations. I remember mm -hmm. being around for all of that. I remember seeing like, just this, there, there's a recording of him um, I think it's on, it, it is on YouTube when he had pneumonia and he's preaching in, in the house mm -hmm. at the dining table. Like I remember peeking through like the stairwell, like I was on the steps, like peeking through, looking like mm -hmm. I, I, I've seen these, like I seen all of these things. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like I always, like, I, like I said, I always knew there, mm -hmm. I can't, I don't remember having like an aha moment. It just, it was, I just, I knew, mm -hmm. um, as far as just like con concern for his life and stuff, um, I think for some strange reason when he would travel, I didn't have much like a, of a concern, but like when, when we were, when we were like having conventions or like here, I think mm -hmm. more so if I was there, yeah. <laughs> I think more so if I was like in the building, I see like, okay, the crowd of people, I see this, like, then I'd be like, all right, like, Okay, like this is, and again, that was kind of after, um, that was after the, my mom got attacked. Um, mm -hmm. Because before then, I mean, like, yeah, we heard these threats, but like no one had ever, at least that I didn't know of, like mm -hmm. no one had the gall to show up or do anything or try anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I mean, I don't doubt that there have, that people have, my parents just shielded us from that. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful because just witnessing that one attack wasn't enough for me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. And now it's like, you know, uh, the way he preaches, of course, on modesty. You know, he's very raw. You know, he's very, as some would say, like, no way this man could be married. No way this man could have <laughs> daughters. And he's talking like, that. there's no, there's no way. No, oh, mm -hmm. you know, or his wife must be miserable. His kids must be miserable. And no, oh, they must hate him. And they must not love, like, Hearing your your dad preach so raw and firm, tell the people what did that like? How how when you you hear that you know as a woman or maybe of course it started from when you were a girl and has you grown into it? How did that like make you feel? What were your thoughts you know on him going so hard and heavy, uh, the way he did? Again, it was so normal to me, mm -hmm. and growing up, um. No one really, it wasn't until I got to like maybe middle school or high school, people started questioning, mainly middle school, that people started questioning why I wore skirts and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, but before that, it was just so, it was, it was, it was just so normal. I mean, yeah, I wanted to play sports. And like, of course, then I didn't think I could, or like, I didn't think I could because I was wearing skirts, but mm -hmm. um, I realized now, like, I, I, you know, I could just like modified, <laughs> obviously the uniform, but mm -hmm. um yeah, it was, it was so normal. And like, you know, we growing up in the church, there were so many kids when I was, when I was young, like growing up. So we had a lot of friends. We had a lot of people that dress like us and look like us, like our families, like stuff like that. So it was really normal. And I, I will say at least, you know, like I said, until middle school, when people started questioning, 
um, that's when it was, you know, I, I told them obviously like, it, you know, it's, it's my faith. Like I believe in modesty, stuff like that. Um, you know, you had people who respected it. You had people who didn't, but it just, it kind of was what it was, but, um, yeah. And I think, I think a lot of young women, especially just the conversations I've had with a lot of, uh, sisters and young women, like, a, we've all kind of gone through the struggle of being like, struggling with self-esteem and then just like being this added layer of okay dressing modestly modestly um so I think that's really common and very um I definitely went through it like in middle school again when a lot of people were like questioning and I'm like well why does everyone keep asking me these questions you feel like in like self like insecure about it you're like okay well why are they saying this or why are they saying that and whatever but um I will say that it was I got both. I got a lot of people questioning it and then like making fun of me. And then I got a lot of people who like really respected me from because of it. Um, and really, you know, really looked out, you know, cause they were like, Oh no, Sierra pastor's kid or Sierra. No, like she's not like that. They knew I went to church. Like, um, so yeah, it was, I definitely like got both, both worlds, mm. both sides, I guess. And how, how does a sister, you know, being young, I mean, probably some that are older as well, they have that uh, tough confidence, you know, issue, especially when the dress up is completely different than what they're normal from and what this world is projecting, yeah. how women should dress. How, I mean, did you do it and how, what advice would you have for the younger sisters in this way of holiness to build that confidence up and loving themselves and how they dress? Because it seems like no matter how much fashion there is, some is just like, oh, I'm in this skirt, I'm, uh, my head is covered, like, why can I look like my friend like this? Or why can I? And, you know, it's, it's tough. And I understand, you know, I'm not looking at down upon them in any way, shape or form. I understand why, because I always say sisters have more of that struggle than brothers like us, man. We just, if, if we were used to wearing shorts in the road, okay, just put pants on and that's it. A sister who was like, so used to wearing the pants, the makeup, the eyelash, the, all of this and stuff like that, uh, you know, now has to completely wipe that away and love themselves, not wearing it. How does a sister, not only in that form, but of course for yourself, I'm sure it was, you know, different growing up where you couldn't have this, you couldn't wear that. How does a sister build that confidence up to really, really truly love herself on the inside to know that this is the way it's supposed to be? Oh, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> um, I think... I think one thing that I definitely harp on when I talk to a lot of the younger saints is that like it, the support system and friends that you have in church, like really, really does help. Mm -hmm. They are, they are the, they are the only ones that understand what you're going through, the struggle with X, Y, and Z. Um, I think having that support system um, is really helpful um, and just having even if it's not in church, but just having friends that respect you and having people who, um, who, yeah, who, who respect you, respect your moral morals, values, how you dress all of that stuff. Um, in regards to like just the self-esteem work, that that's a lot of, in, it, that's a lot of inner work <laughs> that has to be done to be, you know, okay with self. Um, gosh, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I think, I think realizing that no matter whether you're like, I guess just looking at life, whether you're in this way or, you know, or not or whatever, like you're not doing, you're not living life for other people. Mm. Like no, no matter where you are in life, like you really have to find peace um, in your journey and, and where you are, however that looks. Um, I feel like that answer doesn't make sense in my mind, but no, no, it does. It does. It, it does. It does I completely understand. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to answer that. And I don't know why, because this isn't the first time I've been asked that question. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think getting to the root as to why, like, where is this, where, where are the issues with your self-esteem coming from? Um, really looking at self and be like, okay, like what, where are my insecurities stemming from? Are they stemming from 
you know, the things that people are saying about me or are they stemming from because stemming from I, I, whatever it is. I think starting there first, identifying where what's missing or, or what, like I said, where where the insecurities coming from um, and then being ready to work on it, being ready to move past it and like build from there. Um, yeah, I'll say that. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much it's like, you know, let's say, you know, sister, okay, she has a hard time with the head covering. Find out why you have a hard time. Like it could be the friends you're around. It could be yeah. what you're engaging in on social media or what you perceive to yeah. be and all those types of things and work on that. Though. You know what? Maybe you need a better friend. Maybe you need a better support system, exactly. which of course <laughs> leads to my next question for you. Not in terms of how to build a support system, but I know it could be more challenging for yourself and, you know, the rest of your siblings. How do you personally know how to, or to trust that support system that you have? Because is it like, okay, are you, are you coming close? Cause who I am or, you know, are you coming like, how, like, how does that, how does that go for yourself to know that this is the support system I have? These are the people that I can trust. Cause I believe, you know, especially in this way of holiness, trust, mm -hmm. Trust in people is not only a hard thing people have, but it's hard to find, you know, it's hard yeah. to like, so how, 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 how is that for yourself to know that, okay, this is, she's, she's legit or he's legit and so forth. How does that go? I, I honestly will say like, I've just, I've been so blessed with my support system. Like I can't, I honestly cannot say that enough. Like I, I think, and I think I've also been blessed to be able to just, to see for a per to see a person for who they are. Like I'm very, I mean, a lot of people who see me, like I'm typically very bubbly. Like I will allow, like it's like, oh, come on, hang out. Da -da -da. Like I'll talk to everybody, anybody. Um, but I'm I'm very observant within that as well. Like mm -hmm. I I am, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm doing all that stuff, but I'm also I'm looking. I'm I'm listening to the things that people say. I'm like looking at their body language, like I, I'm doing all of that. And I and I've been very good at being able to identify when like, okay, uh -huh. like, you know, person, <laughs> like keep that person at a distance. Like, you know, like, and, uh -huh. and, and there've been other situations where, you know, I did end up really cool with people. And then, you know, unfortunately, like I, I didn't either see the signs or whatever and uh -huh. things happen. Um, I, I, it's definitely, it's definitely been a learning process through the years. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, I think time really, time will tell and time will show you a person. Mm -hmm. um, and that has not, that hasn't failed me. And like I said, I'm just, I, I am truly blessed with the support system that I have, the people I have around me. Like it's, yeah, I, yeah. And yeah. what are some of the characteristics that a support system possesses? Now they may not all have the same like traits, like one may be bubbly and good and one may be quiet, not in that manner, but what are some things to look for? Okay, no, this is how someone supports. This is a way like, is it okay? They know how to support when you're down. Is it they know how to just call and say, hey, you good? What's up? Is it, you know, maybe there's something that uh, personally you needed help with and stuff and they didn't cast you down. They didn't kill you. They didn't judge you. They were there. Like, so what are some of the characteristics you would define to say that, okay, this is a support system? Yeah. I mean, def like trust, like that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. So like trust, like being able to, um, it's very important that like, you know, if don't just tell me what I want to hear, like, tell, like, tell me what's up. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm going to do that to all of my friends. Yeah. I like, I'm not just going to tell you what you're doing here. I'm going to tell you when you're wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, like, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And it's important to have those people in your corner because those are the people who are going to want the best for you. They're not there to just coddle you and make you feel good. Like, mm -hmm. They're there to make sure, like, if you need to be put in check, you're going to be put in check, you know, like, um, that's really important as well. And, you know, the other characters, characters that you mentioned, you know, like showing up for you when you need it, but also being able, showing up, but then also being able to um, tell someone, like, even if you need them, like ask, making sure that they're in a space to show up for you. So what I mean by that is like, you know, I say this by the way, I'm a therapist for people who don't know. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but I say this with my, I, I say this a lot with my clients when they, you know, are always like, I don't want to, I don't want to like, you know, reach out to this person because they have so much going on, blah, blah. And it's like, if they are, if you claim that they're your person, they are your people, like mm -hmm. 
ask them, hey, there's a lot, I have a lot going on right now. I want to talk to you about, do you have the space for me to talk to you right now? Mm. Like, can you hold, can you, do you have the space for that? Can you mm. take on this burden that I have or whatever? Um, and if they say yes, okay, great. If they say no, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. I think ha just having that open communication is really important as well. And being able to be honest with each other in every stage of life, like no, like at your highest and at your lowest. Um, I just, I really value honesty. Like I, that's, that's, I want to say that's the biggest thing. Like, you know, again, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Mm. Pull me aside and tell me I'm wrong. You know, um, mm. uh, yeah, that's the thing that comes up for me. Like, for, like being honest and, you know, if I need to be put in check, put me in check. <laughs> like, no, you, know, you know, and vice versa, you know? No, but like, I, I, open communication, I feel like it's such a huge problem with a lot, especially like, because my background is, you know, island folk. <laughs> Island folk, or as people say, black folk, they take things <laughs> so they take things personal. Like you cannot put them in check almost. Or if you say, "Well, no, you're wrong for this," it's like, "Oh no, get out of here! You're blocked. You're all this and stuff." Like, how does how how can one, you know, be open to receive that being put in check? Like, how what if because I've witnessed it all my life. Like, there's a, a joke that's always said, you know, growing up. It said, this is why black people cannot do business because the moment somebody tells something's wrong, the whole business is shut down. This, per this person quit or oh, no, nah, you don't know how to talk to me. Get out of here. But I've seen it. I've witnessed it. Like, cause where I'm like, you know, where I am, it's a lot of Indians and so forth. They will, they will argue. They will fight. They'll have some of the biggest problems in the world. But when it's time for business, how are you doing? Everything good. Come, come by, come, come and buy it's a whole different thing. So how does yeah. one be open? You know, how, how does that how does that open communication first even get established? Like where it's like, okay, you know what? Nah, you you was wrong, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, boom. Like, how does that even get established? Um, I think one, I think in order. I think often what's, what gets in our way is like our pride or mm -hmm. like we're not really hearing what the other person is saying. We're just like, we're just reacting to someone saying we're wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's like, no, take a moment. It's like someone says, hey, you know, maybe this wasn't the best choice you could have made. Like if, again, if you feel like that person has your best interest at heart, at, at heart listen, mm -hmm. listen with an open mind and, op and an open heart. Like don't, and I think, I think a lot of people carry baggage and like weight with them that makes it hard for them to hear, you know, constructive criticism yeah. that makes it hard for them to, to receive that. Um, I, I'm thinking like, I don't really know how I established that with my mm -hmm. friends, but I think I, I know I talk about it and harp on it a lot. I just was talking to one of my friends last night and I was like, you need to be direct. Like you mm. need to be very direct. Like, mm -hmm. you know, don't beat around the bush. If someone crosses your boundaries or if you feel uncomfortable with something, like be direct with someone. Mm. And like, I don't, I don't know if it's because I'm so vocal about communication, mm -hmm. like other people, like my friends just have, or like, I, I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember how that has started honestly within like my friend groups. But, um, I think, like I said, like we have to be open to hearing that we're wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're just not open to that because we're stuck in our own feelings. We're stuck in our own emotions. We're stuck in who was saying it and not what is being said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just be being more open to that and not, and not taking it as an attack. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's, no, that's, it's, it's, that's wonderfully explained, but it's just it's I see it, it's so challenging. You know, I would say, especially when it comes to you know women, you know, men, brothers, you know what I'm saying? We we kind of like there could be an issue and then yo, all right, man, that's what it do. But woman, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all like why? Why do y'all keep things so locked in? I mean, look, First some men all, are they like that, some men are like that, don't get me wrong. But we know it's common in women. Like I see, I know guys, they can fight, scrap it out, they're eating at the same table. Very next day, yeah, yeah, boom, 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 this and that. Why is it that you know women, you know, tend to really just keep that in, just keep it personal, and just that's it. That's what I'm going through, and that's it. That's my final. That's my final way I'm gonna be. 
Well, I'm going to say that's an overgeneralization. Um, so we're not going to say <laughs> all women. <laughs> gonna, that's what I said most. Based most. off your experience. Yeah, based off my experience. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I'm not going to speak for all women. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to say is that for me personally, I know I, I think depending on the situation, it takes me longer to process through how I'm feeling or to properly identify how I'm feeling and where that feeling is coming from. Am I upset with this person? Am I upset with what they said? Um, like whatever it is, like, like I said, for me, I think it, it, it just depends on the situation. There are some situations where it's like, you know, I talk to the person and, you know, okay, let's go get lunch. Yeah. Um, it, it really depends. And I feel like that's across the board. It really depends on what the situation is and like, you know, how, how we process it and and all of that stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, perfect. Perfect. No, this, uh, it, it's, I, I didn't mean to say all women, if I said so, but definitely, <laughs> definitely from my experience, women is 99%. And then the men are just <laughs> I'm just saying, like my background is Haiti. So they understand, they under, they, they don't understand. The Haitians don't understand, you know, but uh, cause the men, they just tend to be hard headed. And then the women, not all Haitians, of course, but my experience, the women, they just tend to keep things personal and it just, it eats them alive and it, they get stressed and it, you know, it doesn't look good and so forth. But, you know, moving on, of course, to my, my next question, marriage, you know, your dad is very like for me, and this is, people may call me crazy and so forth, but I truly believe the way marriage is preached in holiness is the, like the best possible way it can be preached. Cause when I'm hearing the teachings, I'm hearing protection yeah. versus like for, cause one thing at least y'all would never have ever experienced is falsehood. Falsehood. They, they make you think that you're not normal. If you're single, what you're, 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 you're this, you're 30, something wrong with you. Go, <laughs> go get, go get brother. So, and so go get sister. So what are you doing? What are you doing with yeah. your life? You know, but in this teaching, it's like, take your time, get to know the person time will tell. But, you know, I asked you in terms of marriage just cause you know, hearing how, you know, you're that, of course, and that's how a man should be, not want to settle for any ABC or whatever case. When you hear it preached and how, like, of course, knowing who your dad is, how how does that make you move in a sense to say, uh, okay, if this brother's come in, okay, maybe he has a shot. Like, is it like a, a straight radar where, oh, no, oh, okay, yes, or no, okay, here's that opportune time, okay? Like, how, because I know some could probably feel like, almost discouraged not saying that y'all are but somebody to say like let's say if they have a because you know there's some parents anybody you bring to them it's get out of here get out of here get out of here right but I, i'm sure you know maybe if so there's like you know somebody out there but how you know does um it make you feel in a sense where here in marriage preach like that like do you put in yourself where okay i may never get married <laughs> or you know no it's it, it will happen just <laughs> let me let me let me just relax and so forth like how does yeah, it? Go? I'm well, sorry, what was last thing? Like, how how does it go for yourself in that sense? Um, yeah, I'm definitely like you know when it happens, it'll it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I I don't think I'll never get married. I, I'll sometimes joke with my friends, <laughs> but like I don't mean it seriously. Like I really, I truly believe that when it happens, it'll happen. And um, yeah, I'm just I I am at peace with where I am in my life. And if the Lord blesses me with somebody, then great. But, you know, when it happens is when it will happen. And, um, yeah. Oh, perfect. So there's no, there's not to say discouragement, but there's, you understand the processes in terms of really, okay, I know why my dad is, you know, being this way. I know why he's not only preaching it in this way, but it completely makes sense. It doesn't discourage me. I'm not miserable. Uh, I'm I'm not uh, no I I you know it's it really oh, and that's another thing too like singleness you know how how does one enjoy and love their singleness because once again falsehood you know I have to say falsehood because y'all never been in there but falsehood it, it's it's you know uh, they they'll make you think like you have uh, some type of mental issue if you're no I'm serious it's like for them if you if you were to tell them. I'm going to be single and enjoy my life. I'm in peace to them. It's she just can't find a man or he just can't find that. That's, that's the mentality, you know? So how does one 
truly enjoy their singleness and say, you know what, you know what, and when you could obviously speak, you know, as a sister more because it's the man that has to approach, right? How does a sister like just enjoy her time, you know, you know, in holiness, especially being single and just be at ease. And and what what are some things that you do that help you enjoy your singleness and be at peace with who you are and where you're at in life? I really think it's the people who you surround yourself with. Like I, and I, again, like I have such an amazing like support system of friends and like outside of my family, I'm also really close to my siblings. So like we all hang out and get together, but um, like my friends, like I just was out to brunch with like two of my best friends, like, you know, like I, it's really the, it's really about your support system. Like I have just within the past couple of years, like, you know, this whole, like, you know, I, I didn't think I would meet so many great people in, that are in my life now, like at 29, 30, right? And I'm 31. Yeah. Um, but it really is about who you surround yourself with. Like, and like, I harp on that a lot. Like this past um, convention, we did a seminar for ministers kids. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them, and I was like, the people, like, look around this room, the kids that are here with you, like, like pray to God that you all stick together and like build a bond with one another because mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I just, I can't harp on the importance of having a support system in church um, and being able to lean on one another and utilize them for support and, you know, be able to go on like fun trips with your friends and mm. like all this other stuff. Like there's, it, when you're young and you see everyone else doing all these other things, it's really hard to not see your life in this box and be like, mm. I'm so restricted. Mm -hmm. um, but they're really, you can, you can, and you can have a full life. <clears throat> you can have a full life and um yeah i just it's it's, it's who you surround yourself with mm -hmm. like i really i can't i can't keep saying that enough like yeah. no no it's, it's the friends. truth <laughs> i love them i have great friends <laughs> we oh, have the, the best time when we're all together and it's not even like anything big like we'll go up to like you know a friend's house and we're all just sitting down like we're cooking together we're watching mm -hmm. movies we're playing games like you know um being a part of like the choirs, like one of the, uh, the choirs I'm a part of like Youthful Voices, we did a, um, like a barbecue like a couple weeks ago. And, you know, we we were all there, brought food, playing games, just like having a good time. Like it's really just who you surround yourself with and, you know, surround yourself with people who are also truly striving in this way and like, like are just sincere. And like, you won't have, like, I don't believe you'll have any issues. You both, you, everyone's on the same page and no one's going to put you in compromising positions. Like none of that, like, like you're just there truly enjoying each other and enjoying your time together. And like, um, yeah, it's, yeah. No, that that's, you know, the, the, the real truth of it. And I, I understand why you're constantly repeating it because who you put your yourself around could really tell a lot about who you are and what you're around in a sense. If you're around miserable people all the time, then shoot, soon enough, you're just going to be miserable. If you're on about people always complaining about this, complaining about that, but want to absolutely do nothing to, you know, solve the matter or anything, yeah. then it's so miserable. <laughs> but now, what if there's a sister saying, well, sis, you know, I'm very introverted. I hear that from sisters a lot. I'm very introverted. I don't talk to nobody. I don't know how I can talk to people out there. You know, I, I just want to be by myself or, you know, if that, how does one or, you know, not to say how's one, but what if there's one that just not to say want to not have friends or brothers and sisters, but really just solo dolo, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. is that a form where they can create misery for themselves or is it possible where they can, you know, they can be like that in, in that sense. What are your thoughts on that? Um, that was me at one point, like I, I, and a lot of people don't know that, but like, I didn't become what my parents say, this like social butterfly. Um, gosh, I think end of high school, maybe into college. Like I was very much like only spoke to like my, like in church, like I, you know, say hi, whatever, but I wasn't hanging out with people. Mm -hmm. Like you see me with my cousins or like, you know, obviously my siblings, but like, I wasn't I wasn't going out with people. I wasn't hanging out or anything like that. And that, that also came from a place of like seeing all the things my parents went through and not wanting, like I, 
I had so much dist distrust in so many people. Mm -hmm. um, and one day I just, I realized, and I was like, I can't, I cannot assume that everyone is that way. I cannot assume that everyone is against me. I cannot assume that everyone has a hidden agenda. Uh, I have to put myself out there and I have to be willing to, you know, do something or build some kind of something, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, I, I, I think people, one, I would identify for individuals who are like, you know, no, I'm just, you know, on my own introverted, like, why are they, I, why are they like that? What is the source? Like, is it because like you kind of get anxious around people or is it because you feel like you can't trust people? Like, what is the reason why you want to be solo dolo? Like, um, I would start there. And then I'm also the person I'd be like, you know, if, if I know someone's like really introverted, just come hang out with us. It won't like, just, just come. It's on a few people like, come on, like, it'll be a good time. So, um, and then and people always end up having a good time. But, um, I think if you truly, if someone truly wants to work on that, like, um, and you know, someone, obviously you can't just be going up to anybody, mm -hmm. but if you feel like someone is a good person to be, to have there to kind of help ease you into like group settings or being more social, um, then do that. Um, I think, <clears throat> I do think there, I think you had asked, um, like, can people like create their own misery doing that? Yeah. Like, you know, cause when you put yourself in that box and then yeah. you like, cause some it's, it's I'm not going to lie. You know, it, it can be have its boring perks where it's like, Oh, I'm not talking to nobody. Get out of here. ABC. I'm just doing me. Oh, y'all go to the movies. I go moves by myself. Y'all go eat together. I go eat by myself. Like, you know, can that create, because of course, and pride would come in too, you know, like, okay, I am kind of miserable. I need to humble myself because they already chatted to all the people. Yeah, I don't need y'all. I do me solo dolo out here. You already know what it is. How can that create like, a, you know, real bad, you know, from a misery where random thoughts start to come like, oh, I'm all alone. Shoot. Next thing you know, it went from, oh, I'm all bad by myself to like, Yo, why am I here? Why am I living? Like nobody wants me. Like, you know, yeah, like for some, Yeah, for some people definitely. And again, I think it goes back to the mindset of like what is your what is your purpose for wanting to be solo though? Like what is your purpose for wanting to isolate and like be by yourself? Again, does it stem from hurt? Does it stem from, you know, like I said being anxious around people? Like mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, being for, I think depending on the person's mental state and like where they are, like it can definitely lead to negative thoughts, negative self-esteem, like all of that. Um, and yeah, so I do push people to like, if they feel like they are going in that direction um, and if it is pride getting in the way, reach out, you know, um, reach out to somebody. Um, and, and I understand that is hard too, but um yeah, don't let yourself drown. Like you can ask for help. You can like, you can find somebody out there. Um, so yeah. But who, who, would who do they go to? Cause I think that's another issue. Some just don't know how, who like, okay, reach out, but to who, right. And once again, this yeah. stems from Island folk, like for Haitians, it's like, they don't believe in depression. They don't know that I couldn't, I could have never gone to my mom and dad as a young age. Mom, dad, like I'm, I'm just depressed, man. Depressed. What do the dishes right now? The what do you know about well, when I was in Haiti? Do you know how long I was walking to go to school? Eh? You know how like it's just all oh, I just said I was depressed. So yeah. I, and I think you know for you know folks that grew up like that, that's where a shutdown comes in. You know because we're not allowed to be depressed. I was not allowed to be sad. I was not allowed to like not really you know not smile. Like listen, even after sometimes I'll get beatings, my dad would say, "Make sure you're smiling right now." It was some crazy stuff. So it, it was it was not in an abusive way. My dad was not abusing now. Was, I'm just putting that out there. It was just like that's just how much. And then you know, my mom, she was telling me, "Well, look, back in Haiti, we never. At least you can tell us that we couldn't tell our parents that. All it was, they told us to do something. We didn't do. We got beat. You know, you're blessed enough that we're. You know, we talked to you in ABC, but it's tough. So how do you know?" who to reach out to because that's like that's one of the very big issues for a lot oh do i reach yeah, I out to that. her do i reach out to him like how 
I don't have an answer to that question. And you're right. Like I, I don't. I, I really don't. Um, I, I. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. And I mean, I could say reach out to one of the ministers or something like that. But I. I don't know. I, I really don't know. All I can say is that, like, I definitely have. I've made sure that. I am, I've made sure, especially for young people, like that I, that I am someone that they can reach out to and talk to, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause like I said, it's me and my siblings were talking about this, like we are kind of like the, I guess the first generation of Pat PKs yeah. <laughs> to kind of go through this. So like, we definitely make sure that like, you know, we are like, we that we are people that these other kids can talk to about what's going on, um, about how they feel. And and I agree, it really is hard to identify who to talk to. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer to that. I, I, I don't. No, um, no, but what if as well, because let's say, you know, you, of course, you put yourself, you know, out there too, be reached out to what happens now if you get 50 messages tomorrow 50 AC AC you said I can reach out like what's good I need help but you know but let's say of course it's all you know sisters and whatnot how do you bear that load if if per se like that was the case like 50 people reach out to say hey I hey I need help you said that you you said I could reach out so what's up um well I'm I'm not saying anyone who watches this can reach out to me, <laughs> but <laughs> like <laughs> I'm just making that clear. And I, I don't mean that in a in a rude or mean way. No, I just know course. realistically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also know realistically and where I'm at. I know I can only take on so much. Mm -hmm. Um, I and I will be honest with people, like, and again, it goes with that communication. Like, if you say, Hey, can I talk to you? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, Hey, like, about what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what what is it that you need? Yeah. And if I can take it on, then it's fine. And I've done that before. Like people yeah. find out I'm a therapist and they're like, hey, can you be my therapist? And I'm like, I cannot be your therapist. Like I, I or like, you know, they were like, I couldn't find a therapist. Can mm -hmm. do you mind if I just message you about my problems? And I'm like, I, you know, I'm glad that you find this. It was like on and it was on social media. I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. glad that you find my page as a safe place, but mm -hmm. I don't think. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think this is a good idea. Yeah. Um, or I don't think this is like a healthy choice or decision. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just continue to look for resources in your area. Um, yeah, I, I can, I'm really good at identifying what I can and cannot take on. Mm -hmm. And I will be very mm -hmm. honest about what I can and cannot take on. <laughs> so, um, because, and again, as a therapist, I know the severity mm -hmm. of, you know, people's issues and mm. problems and stuff. And uh, it's not, I know, I, I know where I'm at any given day and how much I can take and how much I can't. And like, if I know, if I can't be there a hundred percent for you and like be in it, like that's not going to benefit you yeah. at all. Like I'm only, I'm only giving you like parts of whatever you need. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be honest with you. Hey, no. And if I know there's like a sister or brother in your area and I know that they will be willing to talk to you, then I can lead you to that person um, or whatever. But, you know, for the most part, I'm, I'm I can be very, I'd be like, no, yes or no, or, you know. No, and which is perfect because that's another thing too. Sometimes, I don't know if it's pride that gets into some where they're trying to, or they feel as if they can help the person and they don't give the best of information. And then that person takes that information, runs off with it and end up being worse than what it already is. You know, so uh, identifying whether you could tackle it is a rightful thing. Now, another question re related to this whole topic, because during the meet and greet, um, that I hosted with Brother Ricky and um, Minister Williams. There was a sister, she, you know, young, I think 22, 23, if I'm correct, because she was wondering, you know, um, where she's at. There's no temple. Uh, the only time she could really kind of see brothers and sisters, it's at convocation. Like, of course, she feels like alone in a way. I mean, she has her parents, right? But, you know, she wants to see if she could find sisters like her age and, you know, she was wondering how it can be done, you know, in a sense, in terms of, you know, finding, you know, that people and stuff. Now, for myself, 
I do the best not to give the advice of like what I know I can do because as outgoing as I am, and look, y'all could do all that laughing and talking. Don't believe me if you want. I'm a very quiet person. I'm a I'm a I'm a very quiet person. I just it's just something I had to, you know, outgoing. Like if this is a, a Jamaican crowd, I'll bust up pata over here. This is my Spanish. Hey, como estás, mi hermano? You know what I mean? That's just how I've been. But you know, on a virgin, you know, since I've you know been in this way of holiness, I found that I'm a very, you know, to myself uh type of person. So I didn't want to give her advice. Hey, just go out there and find somebody. But what advice would you have, you know, for a sister in that position? And she's very like, you know, quiet, you know, introverted and stuff. Like, okay, she comes to the convocation. Like, does she just go up and say, hey, my name is sister so-and-so? Like, how does, how does a sister really, in, and I, I, I find that it's very challenging for them in holiness. I, I don't know why, for sisters wise, but I find it like when they're in the world, they tell me, oh yeah, it's easy, pass, pass. But coming to holiness, they find it such a challenge. So how can a sister in that position, no temple, no sister around, the only time she could see some is when it's convocation. Like, how does she, like, how, what could she do? That's hard. Um, I think my my first, my first thing is like, you know, I know, I know the sisterhood has like a bunch of different, like, Zoom meetings and stuff that uh, that occur throughout the year that I'm thinking she could probably join, um, as well as I know like the youth, the youth captains and the youth committee, they have a bunch of different things that go on throughout the year that, you know, you can join via Zoom. Um, I feel like that's a good way to kind of create connections. Um, being a part of some of these Facebook groups, um, <clears throat> that's really hard. I know, I know I've also had people who, you know, who were ended up becoming friends on social media, you know, and then when they meet in person, like they, you know, they kind of start chatting over social media. Mm -hmm. Then when they meet in person, it's like, oh, okay, like oh, you man. have a friend, you have a familiar face and like yeah. all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have like a straight answer for that because I've never been in that situation. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I, I haven't, I've never been in that situation. So I, I've, um, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard. And I don't, and I get the hesitation to just kind of like go up to like a group of people and be like, hi, this is my name. You know, like I understand that hesitation. Like I don't, if I were in her situation, I don't think I would, I would not be going up to a random group of people who just be like, okay, hi, just because we went to the same church. Like mm -hmm. it, it is hard. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no worries. No worries. No worries. I, would say like, I think definitely that's, I will say that's the beauty of social media. Like, if there are people, even if you don't have a temple, like it, uh, in exact location, like, you know, maybe getting in contact or, um, you know, finding people in the next closest location and, you know, whatever, um, you know, online events that you can join in on um, and kind of create kind of some familiarity with those individuals, um, that can be really helpful. Um, at the very least, like, even though I haven't seen you in person, I've had conversations with you, whether it's like, over like zoom or like i've been a you know part of this or that so um i would say that's that's probably a good way to ease into things mm -hmm. um and if you're willing to travel travel you know mm -hmm. like if you can travel to like the closest temple like travel to the closest temple mm -hmm. um yeah no oh, perfect perfect and it was kind of a you know same thing on uh, on uh, my side you know there was other sisters there that you know gave her uh, another zoom that you know she can go on to and stuff but it definitely gives me like just hearing that it gives me an idea of what to try to incorporate you know something for for the youth and so forth but uh but no so now you know within um of course uh you know you have your challenges and all that you go through in this way of holiness i don't want to say the word pressure but do you feel not feel but you know, pe preacher's kids are preacher's kids, right? Yes. And, yes. you know, at the end of the I day, know. yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just, it's there because you yeah. shouldn't, I believe, I believe y'all shouldn't be, but unfortunately, it's like all eyes are on y'all, you know, and you may have some eyes where, okay, I'm I'm looking out, making sure to see what's up. And then you have eyes, oh, hmm, why is she wearing the heels like that? Why, why? And I thought, mm, okay, you know, it shouldn't be. It, it really, it's it's messed up. But what's and what's crazy, it's not 
like outsiders, like sinners, if people in church, people clapping yeah. and singing and all this stuff. Oh, there, there, there she go. There they go. Like, it's like, how, how does, how do you deal with that? It shouldn't be, you know, it, it shouldn't be this way, but how do you deal with, you know, the pressures, the unnecessary pressures, I should call it. Yeah. I will say when I was younger, it was, it was a lot harder. Um, yeah, when I was younger, it was a lot harder and yeah, it just, it was just a lot harder. And I had like, I remember like people's like, and people were bold when I was younger too. Like people would come up and like, just say random things, like comment about how I dress or something like that. Like I remember, I, I remember one, I forgot exactly what she said, but I just remember one sister, mind you, she was like old enough to be my mother. Mm -hmm. Like, and it wasn't like in a, oh, let me pull you aside. Something's wrong with what you're wearing. It was just a very backhanded comment mm -hmm. um, about something I had on. And I was just like, okay. Like it wasn't even necessary. I remember I told my mom and she was like, what? <laughs> um, like, so I mean, people were very bold when I was younger and like, um, I, yeah, I, as I gotten older, I'm, I can say right now I'm genuinely unbothered. Like, <laughs> I'm genuinely unbothered by all of the, I, I guess the pressure and all of that stuff. I, I truly feel like, as, like, as you said, like, why are you looking at me any harder than you're looking at yourself? Mm -hmm. Um, like you, I really feel like people have a lot of time on their hands and must be bored or must be unhappy with themselves mm -hmm. to have so much to say in regard to how I do things or live my life or whatever, like my siblings, like my mom, my dad, like whatever. Like if you're that pressed about us, like you really need to look inward because <laughs> like we are striving on this journey, just like you, yeah. like just like you, there is no difference. <laughs> like I have, I like it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I genuinely don't care anymore. I'm just like, oh, that's how you feel. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like, okay, but yeah, I really, I, I really, uh, yeah, like I said, I really feel like people who are so pressed about us really need to look inward and like find a hobby. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's yeah. it's just it's really messed up, you know, and um. You know, thank God I'm I'm no PK and stuff like that because I'm crazy. I mean, you said you would take. I would. I, I don't think I could take no comments if I was a PK. You know what I'm saying? Are you supposed yeah. to be just like what? Who are you talking to? Who, you know, <laughs> I, when I was when I was much younger, when I was much younger, I just didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you know that control and stuff. And that's the thing. Oh that's no, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I've said some things when I was okay, younger. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have. Like, um, but. Um, and and that's the worst part too. Sometimes someone just wants like a a bad reaction from you. Yeah. Just a per that's what's even worse. They're not even coming to you genuinely. It's let me come yeah. to you disrespectfully. I don't even yeah. know you like that because I want to get a reaction. Oh yeah, you see, look at look at look at look at PJ's kids. Look at but here you are saying, okay, look at us. We're gonna make mistakes, but we're striving just like you. There's nothing. Exactly. There's nothing. There's nothing different from us. It's not like yeah. there's a special striving lane for us. We have to come up yeah. to things just like you do, and which is beautifully and plainly put. You know, so it's it's once again it's sad, and I could if sinners are doing it, okay, like it's understandable. But when it's the ones that are are saying greetings, sis, and greetings, bro, all this type yeah. of stuff, and still examining and looking, it's it's just it 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 baffles me, you know, and it's um. It can get discouraging for some, but thank God that, you know, you're just unbothered by it and so forth. And, you know, you keep it moving, you know, in that yeah. sense. Yeah. It's, it's taken, it's definitely taken time and experience to get to this point um, that I really think that's just the beauty in getting older. Like you really, you become just more confident in self and like you really become unbothered. <laughs> like, like I've really just become unbothered and it's like whatever people have to say, um, about I will say it's hard for me to if I hear things about my siblings that people are saying it's hard for me to take because I'm just like the protective sister mm -hmm. um but 
if people have things to say about me, it's just like, okay. Like, all right. Mm -hmm. I know it's not true, yeah. but okay. <laughs> and P and that's another thing. Like, I don't, I don't care if like if someone said it, if someone said something that's untrue and like people it, I, don't, I don't think it's ever happened or at least it's never gotten back to me where like it started like spreading like wildfire and like it, like I just I don't the people that matter like and I don't mean that in a rude way but I mean like my people mm -hmm. they know me and they know my character they know who I am yeah. and I feel like that's what matters all these other people who again need a hobby um I don't care mm -hmm. so yeah, and that's what goes into having a proper support system that yeah. if there's something that's told, not, mm -hmm. the first thing shouldn't come, wow, I can't believe C did this. But exactly. it should be your C, yo. There's this rumor going that A, B, C, D. We know that's mm -hmm. not you. you know, that's not me. All right, cool. Do says peace be, and just keep it moving, which it, it, it's tough to find something like that. So thank it, God it that is. you are. You were able to find, you know, a support system, you know, to have uh, actual supporters who want yeah. the actual best for you and don't mean uh, the worst for you in that sense. Yeah. How does that bond, that bond between, you know, siblings, because First Church, I believe is literally the, like, it's like a, a, a modern day, back in the day church. The reason why I say that, because back in the day, you would hear, oh yeah, seven of us, eight of us. Uh, I'm hearing there's some family of 18 and 20, I think, uh, <laughs> Uh, the Bowens and whatnot, the 20 siblings. And I'm like, what? It's like today, that's stuff you heard like in the 18s and all this <laughs> stuff like that. You know, with having seven siblings, you know, I just come from a household. I just have one brother. So, uh, you know, that bond, it wasn't, it was evident that it was going to be there. How is that bond maintained, you know, between, you know, the seven of you? Uh, Cause it's very beautiful to see. You know, the way I see you. Because, you know, you have that siblings grow up, oh, I hate you, all that type of stuff. And it shows. Like, it just, it's there's no hidden agenda to it. You have some generally, like, get out of my face, or peace be unto you. Like, get the, and these are, they're actually blood related. You know, how's that bond kept? You know, and how important is it to you, you know, having that bond with, you know, your brothers and sisters? Um, I think growing up, especially again being pks like we had each other mm. like we had each other through all the nonsense we had each other through what this person was saying that person was saying so like um as frustrating as situations would get or like you know regular sibling stuff or we'd be mad at each other like we still like each other like we we were the only ones that knew exactly what it was like to be in that position yes. um and there's nothing that is going to break that no matter what spat we get into at the end of the day like you know like we got each other's back and like i i, I think yeah i think us being in that position really like made us closer because again we all were very as we got older we all became more social in different ways but like growing up like it was just it was us with each other yeah. like and that was and that was it um yeah and i and, and having yeah just again them knowing like we were the only, like we knew we were the only ones to know what we were going through mm -hmm. um and to be in that position and i and that really um really helped our bond and just as we got older and just like lived life and just, mm. yeah, we, I mean, we all genuinely have a good time when we're together. Like we just, mm. or overall, we all have very interesting conversations. Like mm. we all are like down for a good time. And like, um, yeah, I just, yeah. No, that's wonderful and beautiful to hear, especially today. Cause once again, you know, with my experience, um, it's so common to hear. It's just literally two siblings. Just two, not seven, just two. And they hate each other to death. Like, no, no, like, no. Like, I'm talking about, like, on a spectrum, if you're on fire, I don't care type of, you know, love. And it was always, you know, painful to see. So to see that bond, you know, within seven, and if there's more, eight and nine, 10, 11, 20, whatever the number, I don't know what the highest number is, but man, whatever the highest number is, it's, you know, it's a, a very beautiful thing to have now you know as you know talk so much questions just come up so forgive me with all That's these right. questions. no go um, ahead how how important it is 
is it to have, you know, a mother who really can keep a home? Because that's another thing not everybody grew up with. And what I mean, not everyone grew up with, I'm not talking about where the mom was not there, but mom was there, but not there. You know, because mm -hmm. I feel like a woman could really like make things really go upside down or keep things level. And your dad is traveling all the time. And it's not going to stop. It's not like, he, you know, it's going <laughs> to, that's the crazy part. It's not like, yeah. well, all right, he's getting older, you know, retired. Mm -hmm. he, he's pushing for retirement. Yeah, five <laughs> more years and that's it. He ain't going nowhere. It's like, I, I truly believe these next couple of years, it's probably going to increase even, even more because now it's on a, a platform where it's being reached out so heavily. How important mm -hmm. is it, you know, and how much have you learned, you know, from your mom in terms of the strength she was able to carry for all seven of you, you know, even though, you know, father was traveling left and right. And here she's obviously worried. Okay. Is he going to come back? Okay. He's back, but now he's back. Now he's gone. It, it's, you know, it's, it's not, I, I, I don't think I can count even on one finger, the amount of women who could actually go through that and still be rooted, still be sound, still be loving, yeah. still be meek. Like usually they, they're, they're crazy. They're gone. They're wild. <laughs> and loud and they, they, they just can't, they can't, yeah. you know? And for your dad to say, the statement where if God never showed him his wife, he would have, like, I don't think people understand how bold of a statement that is to say God showed yeah. your wife. Like, that means, like, this is it. Like, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Her going on the street, like, where you at? And all that. You don't have to worry about all that. <laughs> you know? It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's it's bold. Like, when he yeah. says that, I'm like, man. Like, he, yeah. he's, wow. So how important is that? And how much have you learned from her over the years, like, growing up what, what have pretty much of what helped you today as the woman you are I mean everything I think like just the I think a lot of my personality comes from her and like just I think like you know like 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 the mothering side that I have like if you talk a lot of people that I know one if you see me I always have somebody's kids with me yeah. like I love kids I just I have this very just like yeah motherly like personality to me and I, that definitely came from my own mother but I mean I don't I I don't know anything different like she she held it down like she was there all seven of us do the traveling through everything and I, and I there's so much of again who I am as a person that is directly reflected upon like her being there and having you know, having held us all down all those years. Um, yeah, it's very important. Like she obviously has taught me like what it is to be a mother, what it is to be a wife, like all of those things. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, it's there. like, I just, they're, they're, I can't, I, I don't think I can put it like into like words like directly. It's just like, it's again, I don't know anything different and I don't, it's I, there's so much of me that I've gotten from her mm -hmm. because of who she is and because of, you know, what, um, what she went through and, and all of that. So, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's honestly such a, a beautiful thing to, you know, be able to witness because once again, it's, it's, it's not a, a common thing, right. You know, once again, based upon experience, Oh yeah. You know, she went crazy. Um, yeah the whole family's upside down this and just to see it on especially the platform right because like people know your dad it's like yeah. even if she goes out with him oh hey can i get this or can i get that and you know and it's 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 tough but it's a beautiful thing yeah. you know at the same time in that sense now you know j just a few more you know a few, few more and i'm gonna let you go you know <laughs> hey, you don't know, you know, get these things on the door now you know what i'm saying oh, God. you know it's you know uh coming of course to holiness you know you have your challenges and um you know being modest and you know all these you know forms of stuff is there a way where you personally uh maybe have experienced it and if you have like how do you you know identify where this person is like it's already a red flag mm. you know like it's already like because there's some you give that time and then you see but yeah. there's, there's some like you can just see all right nah 
you know, and I'm sure like within your experience and being in this and growing in it and all this, like how, how does it like, okay, you know what? Mm -mm. This is, this is pure redness. All I see is red over here. Like, how do you, um, I, oh. I, I want to say it's a feeling. And the thing that comes to mind, though, is my dad always saying, like, yeah, it's not a feeling, it's gas or whatever. Um, but I was actually talking to my dad about this. And I was like, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to be quick to say, like, it's the spirit of the sermon or whatever. But like, like, I like every time something was just off, I just I. I sensed it and I felt it and I was right every time. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even have to say or do anything. I just mm -hmm. watched. And like, I, again, at a distance, but I watched and I was right every time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is like what comes out of someone's mouth. And sometimes it is just me just, just observing. And it's like something, but I just sit back, keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm let things play out and then it's like okay all right I, okay like okay but um yeah like truly like I said every time there was just a feeling of like uneasiness mm -hmm. or like something just doesn't seem right it's come to pass it has it's come to pass so yeah I yeah yeah <laughs> pretty much just believe it. Yeah. Believe it, no matter what the person is, because you have some. It's like, oh, maybe it could just be me. Fa la la la, you know all this type of stuff. But and uneasiness. Like, yeah. I think I don't. So for people who are like that, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But don't don't ignore it. Mm -hmm. Even if you're like, you know, maybe it is just me. Just keep it in the back of your head, like, because mm -hmm. that's kind of how I move. Like, even if I do seem like it feels like something's wrong, it's like, okay, let me just. Let me, let me keep it to myself and keep it moving. Let's see. Let's see. Um, again, I still kind of keep things at a distance because I'm I'm still trying to like you know feel feel you out or feel the situation mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's okay to still be like, all right, let, let me be sure. Mm -hmm. Let me not complete. Like, let me be sure. And as and everyone should because sometimes our feelings are wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's okay to be to 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 do that. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I just I did want to preface that like it's okay to 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 do that, but um, yeah, like just listen to yourself, mm. but also be very just be observant, be mm. very observant. Um, and my one thing my dad always says is like you know to test like test people, mm. you know tell them something you don't mind getting out, mm. you know yeah. like I'm a firm believer in that like test somebody um mm. and see if they really are who they claim to be, see if they really are in your corner like they you know pretend or act to be so um yeah wonderful 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 and of course <clears throat> you know because within that answer it leads you know over to the you know next question reconciliation mm. okay you know our friends and i right, maybe an argument a disagreement i don't know what it is mm. you know and um is there always room for reconciliation? And what I mean by reconciliation, I'm not talking about on a form where things will probably go back to exactly the way it was, because there's always going to be that slight change, you know, yeah. of depending, you know, what size is ABC. Mm -hmm. What are some, you know, practices for that, for one to reconcile, especially, you know, being young, right, uh, in, in this way, because disagreements are going to happen. Um, you're not whether it's a support group or not. You all are not going to see eye to eye on the same things. Yeah. I mean, I should if that's the case. I don't know what. God bless your support group, not mine. You know, <laughs> should uh, speaking myself, my wife. We don't we don't see eye to eye on everything. You yeah. understand? Try be a kind woman. But anyways, it's it's really to the point where I feel like that's what like like not damages but kills a lot of people internally. It's just when it's time to reconcile. And now it's like the one person, it's, hey, greetings and, oh, and hugging. And how was, uh, now it's like, oh, hey, oh. Yeah. It's it's like you wouldn't even think y'all even knew each other. Yes. Yeah. So where, where, where when is there room for that reconciliation? Um, When you have truly let go. 
Mm-hmm. Um, just based off experience, like I, you, hold, I always say like holding on, and again, I can speak from experience, like holding on to things, at least for me, like it's such a burden and it's such a weight, hanging on to the anger, hanging on to the hurt, like just it, it weighs you down, or it weighed me down. And I really had to like get to a place and just be like, why, why am I letting this hurt dictate my life so much? Like I just, I got sick of feeling weighed down. I got sick of just the state I was in and really just, and really had to pray and just be like, Lord, like I, I, I don't want to hold on to this stuff anymore. I can't hold on to this stuff anymore. Um, I need to let go. Um, and I, and in situations, you know, there are some situations that was easier. Again, I could talk to the person and forgive and be like, okay. And I'll see you like, oh, Hey girl, what's up? Like, mm-hmm. and, and it'd be perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Um, other situations, it took a lot longer, but like, you know, truly just like praying and making sure that like, I have let go whatever I need to let go. So that way, when I do see you, I can genuinely greet you Mm -hmm. and be genuine with it. It doesn't mean I have to be your best friend. It doesn't mean we have to be going out every weekend to brunch or to dinner, Mm -hmm. but like when I see you, I can genuinely greet you and it be genuine. Um, That's the most important thing. Like, you know, like not holding on to any of that. If you're still like, Oh, Hey, what's up? Like that makes me feel like you're still holding on to something. Mm -hmm. So like, what like ask yourself are you still holding on to it and if you are have you really forgiven that person like mm-hmm. you don't you're not i mean for some people they do forget for others they don't but um is that all you think about when you see that person mm-hmm. that's very telling you you need to work on truly forgiving that person and truly mm-hmm. letting go of that hurt that distress whatever it is mm-hmm. um it's very freeing when you do oh, yes it's yeah. very, it's very yeah. free and very <laughs> liberating when you do. Yeah. Um, so yeah. No, absolutely. No, this is, these are some wonderful, wonderful uh, um answers you have. By the way, you know. Um, once again, thank you so much for coming on, sis. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> cutting it off, though. Um, you know your uh, baptism, because a lot of the times, once again, falsehood. Ah, you know they do they force yes. You know, a lot of I've witnessed it myself. Um, you know, they'll be like slick about it in ways. Oh, hey, your friends are getting baptized. Hey, what's up? You should go too. Go. Oh, why do you want to be baptized? I, I remember the reason because I got baptized in false, so there was incorrect baptism. And my dad asked, he said, Why do you want to be baptized? And I, I just repeated what I knew he wanted to hear. Oh, to be saved. Oh, all right, go ahead. That was it. I had no clue what was to be done afterwards and you know you feel all different right after and all that you know i'm hello greetings god bless and peace be unto you in the lord yeah. jesus <laughs> you know you feel that way but yeah coming into holiness now it's like and that's one thing that was like wow to me is mm-hmm. where you know it showed that when pj's preaching he's literally when he's on that pulpit it's it's just literally the spirit it's not his flesh you know, because most preachers, you know, they try to be slick. My kids, uh, if they're going to be in my roof, they must be baptized. They cannot, you know, it's, no, he says they have to have a mind for themselves. They, ha- they have to want to do it. If I'm telling them to do it, if I'm making them do it, then they're doing it for me and it's done incorrectly. So when that moment came for you where, okay, I'm getting this done. This is it. Like, when did that come about? And how did that come about? Like, how did that I, conviction begin to process? Uh, I remember that day. Um, it was during one of the youth com- conventions. Um, I had been like, fifth, I think it was like 15 or 16 or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it was my junior year in high school. Um, I had knew I wanted to get baptized for a long time and for a while. And there were... I, I, I was genuinely just scared. I like, I had this like weird fear of water <laughs> like then. And it sounded like thinking about it now, like it was so small and it was like such a tr- like trivial reason to wait as long as I did. But I genuinely was like, I'm terrified. Like, am I gonna, dr-? like literally like, so I remember like during prayer, I just remember like crying. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I just could not stop crying. And then I was like, I'm going to go talk to my dad. And I went to his office and I remember he was talking to Minister Gary. And I walked in and I was like, I want to get baptized, but like, I'm scared. Like, I don't know. Like, I remember. I like came in his office crying and I was like, I want to get baptized, but like, I'm scared. And um, I was like, he consoled me and like, I asked you, I don't even think he asked me questions, he just consoled me, whatever. And um, and I just, I'm like, I want to get baptized. I think I asked him to do it, or I I don't even know if I asked him to do it. I think he just was going to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember he went to go tell them to open up the, cause in Frankfurt Avenue, like the pool was right under the pulpit. So we had to like, like, you know, move everything and stuff like that. I think he went out to go tell them um, to, you know, open it up and like, get me ready. And I remember Mr. Gary was sitting there. He was like, congratulations. (laughs) I'm like, thank you. Like crying. (laughs) And and I remember, yeah, I remember getting ready and um, yeah, getting baptized. I remember that. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. No, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And once again, that's just another beauty about this way of holiness. As as hard as he preaches, as hard as he is. And when you just have conversations, you know, with him for those of you watching, it's 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 mad because my first time when I met your dad, like look, I've came across so many different types of celebrities. I was never one to go to like you know concerts and stuff in the world, you know. Oh, hey, there's this and that. All right, there's you know, this and this. The first time I met him, it wasn't like I was starstruck, starstruck, but it was like, yo, he's real. I, I really didn't think that was real. I, I didn't think so. Like, I'm like, no way, no way. God has this man preaching today. This, this has to be from the 1800. No way. And then I make my way up to the first convocation. Oh, no, it's when he came to Canada and uh, he comes, you know, and I see him and so forth. I'm like, yo, he's actually real. And then when I got to end of year, my first end of year, I met him in his office. Like, I, I couldn't, I could not believe that this was happening and so forth. So I guess it was just that transition because, you know, or is here in my right, I say, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm talking. To, and then just to see, hey, agree sit down, son. What can I do? You know, it's just, it's so different. So it's a beautiful thing where, you know, he allowed and he preaches it where, because it's not only past uh, ministers, parents as well you have to let your child have its own mind to if they want to do this or not now last question you know what i'm saying i don't i want to let you go enjoy your saturday maybe oh, you're fine you're fine <laughs> um the growth uh, you know you've obviously been from when it was like wherever it was like how beautiful has the growth been like just think about it from very long ago from okay this was it to where it's at now like i always say my mini growth was when we were in the gymnasium. That, that, that's my to the Lord Auditorium. Yeah, and it's yeah. just so beautiful. Yeah. You know, because you're going year after year thinking, are y'all going to really get out this gymnasium? Not that I mind, because the word is coming. And mm. that was beautiful itself. How beautiful has the growth been from like way where it was to where it is now? The amount of people coming in, the countries, like Fiji Islands, some countries I can't even name of people yeah. here. Like how beautiful has it been for you to witness? I was just talking about this with my friends like it it's like I remember like when we would like announce baptisms for like the year and it was like 300 Mm -hmm. like I I I remember that and I remember when we got to a thousand like I I remember I remember all these things and now like just like just in DC over the past weekend like over 200 people were baptized that's that's crazy and it's just like Jeez, like Jesus, please, like wow, like it, it really is like like we're really seeing just everything like unfold. Mm-hmm. And it, it it is just you just sometimes sit and think and you're like, wow, like as a kid hearing them, you know, and of course everyone, you know, you're excited, whatever like back then, the 300, 400, like you you never not that you never think you're gonna get to like I think we're, I think it was last year, like 8,000 or something okay, or 8,000, yeah, yeah. like, mm-hmm. like, you know, there's going to be growth, but then like to see like 300 and like 8,000, like over 8,000, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's insane. It's like, what, what, mm-hmm. like what I remember, I, I remember before, I remember when we hit like our thousand telecasts and how big of a deal that was. Like, I, I remember all of like these, like these milestones and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, 
wow wow like wow you know no that's it i mean it would have of course been something beautiful to experience as well as you know uh you know minister williams and all what takes because i think what hits so much you know for them it's like your dad is literally telling them these things it's just yeah. different if it happens right it happens wow wow jay you you really went far but yo, he literally was telling them like yeah. it's gonna be this it's gonna be that and to see it you know it's so beautiful last last question before i let you go it's a question i usually just ask you know when you of course look back at your life and see you know where you are and the woman you are today like how grateful are you to to god for not only pastor gino jennings but your dad as well on both spectrums like how grateful are you to god you know for him I mean, like, I, I don't think words can express. Like, I just, again, I see him as my dad <laughs> first. And just to be able to, just to be able to, like, go to him and, like, you know, like, cry to him, like, when I need to and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, I think there are things I definitely there are things I definitely didn't have to go through because he is who he is and because I listened and I'm like forever grateful for that. Um, and, you know, just having him as a father and obviously like as, um, as pastor and everything, like it really, it just, it, I, it's, it's hard to explain. Like it, it really is hard to explain. Like I, I am so, I am very, very grateful. Um, again, it's a, it, it can sometimes be a two-edged sword, but just to be able to have him as my dad mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, sit and talk to him whenever I want about this or that, or about, you know, life issues or just like, you know, random things like that has really, that's really helped me um, in this crazy life journey. Um, especially over the past like couple of years, um, it's really been, yeah, he's really, he's really helped me a lot. And I, I am really grateful. I'm grateful for both of my parents to have mm -hmm. them to be who they are. And um, yeah, I don't think I would have gotten through. I'm specifically fo like just focusing on like this past couple of years because it's been a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I would have gotten, th gotten through what I, all that I did if it wasn't for them both and just mm -hmm. being there for me and like supporting me and you know um hearing what I need like regarding the word and all of that stuff like just it's yeah it's yeah. oh wonderful 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 well once again sis you know this podcast was you know magnificent splendid <laughs> you know geez geez Louise it was a breeze it was good but I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just warning you now. I'm going to be taking that G's Louise. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be taking that, it. Yeah. That's something I'm going to call her out. That's something that my best friend Tiana says. Okay. She always says G's Louise, Papa Cheese. And I just started saying it. Yo, and it's just like the funniest thing. Well, it's, it's, it's a domino effect now because it, it, it came to me now. G's Louise, Papa Cheese. Yes, I'm taking that. And we're going with it. But no, for real, um, sis, thank you so much, you know, for taking the time and coming on the podcast you know you know sharing your testimony giving good advice you know just really being authentic being yourself and just you know I, i'm really really grateful for it uh, i'm truly grateful for those of you watching and listening and tuning in as i say I'm, I'm doing the best i can with all these life happens and stuff that's why i was a bit you know away and everything so you know keep me and my family in prayer of course um but no thank you very much for taking the time to come out truly grateful for it those of you watching keep your sister in prayer keep the family in prayer of course keep the father in prayer as well as well as myself keep me and my family in prayer i'm doing the best i can to strive in this way of holiness uh with god's unchanging hand um thank you all once again for tuning in i love you all very much um share this out left right you, you know what to do i don't need to tell you what to do by now you know what to do all right thank you very much I appreciate y'all. Y'all take care. It's your brother, Sonny Esperance. God bless and peace be unto you.